Hello and welcome to Mint Canvas Studio. In today's video, I'll give you a tour of our new Notion template for coaches and course creators, the Coaching Client Tracker. This template is designed to organize and collect all your clients in a powerful CRM system. It has a dedicated page to track all clients in every stage of the pipeline, a client template to get a personalized overview of every client's progress, and many more features to help you organize all your sessions and business-related tasks. But let's start from the beginning and take a look at the dashboard. The dashboard is the first page of the tracker. Here you will set up your template for the first time. As usual, this setup is very easy. Navigate to the bottom of the page, open the database toggle and access every source database. Click on the little checkbox on the database menu and select the delete option. This will eliminate all example pages, giving you a clean slate to work on. But before that, let's take a look at how this tracker functions. On the dashboard, you have an image meant to represent your professional headshot or branding photo. You can replace this image by clicking the three dots and selecting Replace from the menu. Input your name below the image to get a personalized welcome when you open Notion. Next to the photo in the center of the page, you have an automated overview of your tasks, sessions, invoices, and goals. This notification card pulls data from other databases and works automatically in the background, updating each time you add or edit certain pages. Next to it, there's a clock, and below, the quick action buttons to add pages to specific databases directly from the dashboard. Then there's a colored block acting as a sticky note to jot down quick notes. On the opposite side below the photo, there's another callout block containing a few useful links you might want to have handy. This block is synced with the other one found on the planner page, so every edit you make on one page will appear on the other. Moving on to the other sections, we've included two weekly calendars, one for your tasks and the other for upcoming sessions. You can add pages directly from the calendars if you want using the plus button. Then we have two columns. The first one on the left displays clients you must contact this week. If you click on the name and open their page, you'll see the date of the follow-up call. On the card, however, you can see the last time you contacted the client and some notes. For example, for Jenna Dale here, we've written that she might be a good fit for this program, which is something that we might want to mention on the next call. The right column holds cards for any upcoming sessions for this week. Below we have on the left another section that displays your current active clients. On the cards you can see their names, status, a short bio, the program or service they have booked, the date of the earliest upcoming session, and a note you can write down directly from the card or by opening the client's page. If an invoice related to a client is overdue, you will see this red alert on the client's card, so you can promptly identify outstanding invoices and solicit payments. The column on the right shows any upcoming invoices with their due date and amount. So this is the dashboard, meant as a summary of all your weekly activities neatly categorized. Now let's take a look at the Client Hub. This page is your CRM system. On the top section of each page of this template, there's the quick action menu and some links to correlated pages. In this case, we have testimonials, the logbook and invoices. Below you have two weekly calendars for upcoming follow-up calls and sessions. These calendars are useful when programming a call to see which slot of your agenda is still open. As you can see, the cards display the day and time of calls or sessions. And if you open a page, you can change the date and time using the follow-up property. Remember to activate the Include Time option when inputting a new date to specify the time of the day. All pages of the calendars are sorted by time, as you can see from the examples. You can add new pages directly from the calendars, but for new follow-up calls, you have to amend the date property for each client or drag and drop the cards around the calendar and select a new time for your call. If you choose the plus button in this case, you will create a new client's page, not a new follow-up call. For the session calendar, you can use the plus button to add new sessions. Fill out all the properties and the session will appear on your calendars. 
Now, let's move on to the actual CRM. Below the calendars, the first section you see is dedicated to your follow-up clients. Here you will see all clients you need to contact again. The cards show their name, short bio, and the date you last contacted them. You can also add brief notes. The following section contains all your leads and the cards here display the type of lead, so warm, hot, or cold. Again, the short bio and the label indicating the last time you contacted a lead or if you still need to make the first call. You then have your client pipeline to easily view all clients and their stages. You can drag cards from one column to another to update the status property. If you want to edit the default statuses, edit the colors or add the new status, navigate to the database menu, click the three dots and select properties. From the list, select the status property. You can edit the options from this menu, change colors, reorder options, and add or delete some. If you instead want to reorganize the columns, from the view options, select group. From this window, you can hide an option or make it visible. Change the order or amend other properties. For example, if your lead list happens to be quite long, you might want to hide this status from the pipeline. On this note, you might have noticed that all sections except the calendars are in a toggle. That was designed to let you select which area of your client database you want to view or work on, and for a more efficient organization of the page itself. Normally, we tend to have longer lists of leads that might take up too much space. So putting each section of your client list in a toggle helps you focus on specific areas while improving usability. The last section of this page is dedicated to your active clients. Here you will see all clients that are onboarding your programs or are actively working with you. The cards here will display the program or service the client has booked, the earliest upcoming session, your notes, and the invoice alert in case of an overdue payment. Before we leave the client hub, we have to take a look at the template we have created for each client. If you open an example page, below the client's name, you see their status, lead type, if applicable, and the last con contact date. Then there's a section where you can input a short bio, select a service they're interested in, collect email and phone number, and indicate a follow-up call if needed. You will also see the note property. After these sections, there is the template. For new clients, if you don't see it, Select New Client to generate the template. In the top left corner, there's a button to go back to the Client Hub. Below, there's the Quick Action menu and the Testimonial database to collect the client's review once they complete a program. Next, you see the services or programs your client has booked, and below, there is the Coaching Map section. This allows you to assign specific modules to your client and track their progress. The stage column refers to your client's current stage. For example, you can input week one. Input all stages with relative timeframes and status to track the progress and development of the program for each client. You can add also specific notes here. Next, you see the task database, which holds tasks relating to the specific client. These tasks can be steps you or your client have to perform. If you look at the Quick Action menu, there are two buttons called Add Onboarding Tasks and Add Offboarding Tasks. These two buttons were created to make the onboarding and offboarding phases much easier and quicker. So if your clients have to perform the same tasks every time, it is much more productive to set up a little system like this to quickly add tasks to your agenda. So click the buttons and see the tasks appearing on the planner. You can then assign a date and a priority and check them off once the client completes them. All completed tasks appear on the Done tab. As for default, we have included a few example tasks. To edit these options, you need to change the button automation. So place your cursor next to the button, and in this case, let's take the onboarding button as an example. Click on the Edit button, the little gear icon, and the editing window will appear. Here you can see the automation. When the button is clicked, do the following. 
In this case, add a new page in the task database as a new task. Below, you can enter the name of the task, so you can edit the existing ones, delete them or add new pages. To add a task, click the three dots icon here and select Duplicate. Change to the title and the new task will be added to the button automation. As you can see, each task has the type property already set to onboarding and the client is related to the current client. To delete a task page, click on the three dots and select Delete. Once you've finished editing the tasks, click on Done and the button will be updated. Do the same with the offboarding tasks. Moving on, let's look at the session planner. Here you can add new sessions for your client on your weekly or monthly calendar. Finally, you can collect session notes in this section here. And important documents such as contracts or other material in the document documents area. This database contains templates for contracts, proposals, onboarding and offboarding stages. You might want to check and edit them to fit your business. Once you create a new document, choose the template you want to use from the list and it will populate the page automatically. If you want to modify the templates or upload your own, navigate to the blue button and click the down arrow. From the menu, select the template you want to edit and click on the three dots. Select Edit and open the page. The yellow banner on the top of the page will tell you that you're editing a template. Make all the necessary adjustments and then click out of the page or simply go back to the previous page. Your template is now updated and will automatically generate whenever you need it. The last section of the client page contains all invoices related to your client. The cards display the invoice number, the status and the due date. If an invoice is overdue, the relative checkbox will appear. This property is a formula so you don't have to edit it. When a client pays you, simply change the invoice status to paid. And that's it for the client page. We wanted you to have the option to focus your energies on a single client and have all their information neatly organized in one place. The next page is the planner. Here you have your weekly and monthly agenda with business-related or coaching tasks all organized. You can distinguish them by the tasks. You can also assign a priority, a specific client or a goal. Once you complete the task, check the checkbox and you're done. Below the calendars, there are three tabs. The first is for pending tasks due today. The second is for overdue tasks to reschedule. And the third is for tasks without a deadline. All tasks are sorted by priority. You can add a new task to every tab, change its properties and mark it as completed. The final section of the page contains two session calendars, weekly and monthly which hold all your upcoming sessions. Once you complete a session, check the relative checkbox on the card to mark it as done. You can reschedule any session just by dragging the card from one day to another, but remember to adjust the time as well. The Business Hub is where you set and track your business goals and collect all relevant resources to run your business. The Goal Planner section is where you add your goals. The first table is your planner, holding only goals that are not started. Here you can add new goals, set deadlines and see how many days are left before the deadline. The other two tabs show active and completed goals, their deadlines and progress. And you can also mark goals as complete, which will move them into the last tab. Below, you also see a gallery dedicated to your current monthly goals. So every goal with a deadline relative to this month will appear here. The progress property refers to the number of completed tasks related to your goal. You can ignore this property if it doesn't apply and mark a goal as completed just with the checkbox. The last section of the Business Hub contains the resources database with three views. The admin collects all business documents. The coaching contains all coaching related resources, as you see here, grouped by type. The last table is entirely dedicated to contracts. Moving on to the Coaching Hub. This page is reserved for your programs and services. The first section organizes them into four categories. Active, coming soon, discontinued and inactive. For each service, you can indicate the name or title, status and price. You can add a cover photo and select one from, from the library or upload an image. 
you can also relate some tags. To edit the tags, click on the property name and select Edit Property to change the options and colors. You can then add a short description and assign payment options or payment plans if applicable. You can also relate specific modules to each program and they will appear in this section, but more on that later. Finally, you'll see all clients that have booked the service. So the Module Builder is a tool to create detailed modules related to your programs. This tool is especially helpful if you teach online courses to collect all documents and lessons. You can organize all documents that make up your coaching library here, access data and revise the information whenever needed. The first table is grouped by service. You can add a brief description and even relate documents from the resources database. The other two tables are filtered to show modules relating to a specific service. To create filter views, first you have to add all your services or programs to your database using the section above or the relative button. Then open the two-week program and the four-week program tab. Click on the filter icon on the database menu and open the filter option. Where it says program contains, check the relative service from the menu. To create other views, Click on the name of an existing view and select Duplicate. Rename the view and change the filter option for the corresponding program. Finally, this page contains the node database. The first view is grouped by client and the second is the archive. We have concluded the tour of the main sections of these templates, but there are other subpages to consider. You find them all in the subpages toggle on the footer section of the dashboard. The first subpage contains instructions to set up and use the template. The second one contains all client testimonials and reviews. Then there is the logbook page. The logbook is designed to help you track specific metrics or targets you want to achieve daily, weekly, or monthly. As default, we've included columns to track daily calls, clients booked, new leads and the sales you made, but you can edit each property to track different metrics. When you use the new entry button to add a new page, the date property will automatically be populated with the current day. In the log session column, you can write at followed by today without the space to get an adaptable page title like the ones you see on the table. If you have goals relating to reaching specific targets, like for example, make 15 monthly calls, at the end of the month, you can refer back to this page and see if you have met the targets you set. Another subpage is the invoice manager, when you can create and collect all invoices, set issue and due dates, assign status and clients, and indicate the amount. This database has an invoice template that lets you generate invoices and send them to your clients. Edit the template and input your business information and payment details. So each time you create an invoice, you already have your template ready. In the description section, indicate the service or program your client selected, the unit price, the quantity, and the tax percentage. The other columns will auto-populate. Once the invoice is ready, you can either share the page with your client or download it as a PDF and send it via email, for example. The last subpage is your notes manager and contains all your session notes organized by client. And then the notes archive. And this concludes our tour of the new Notion template designed for coaches or course creators. Let us know in the comments what you think and if you already use a client tracker in your business. I hope you found this video helpful and if you have questions, do let us know in the comments. The link to purchase the template if you're interested is in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.